Every now and then, a new vehicle comes along that reignites your passion for adventure. The 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser, an icon in the Overland community, did just that for me. From the moment I saw its pre-production model, I knew this was a vehicle I wanted to take deep into the backcountry. Sure, there's always a bit of skepticism for the first year models, they can have their quirks, but I decided to take the plunge and get my hands on this incredible truck. Today I'm going to give you an in-depth tour of it, highlight the features that I think set it apart from the competition, share a few of my critiques, talk about why I chose this one specifically, and reveal my long-term plan for this Land Cruiser. But first, let's explore this trail a bit and see what this truck can do. This is my brand new 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser. And I've had this for about three days now. And the more I drive it, the more I look at it, the more I think about the possibilities of what this is gonna turn into. And I can't believe how overbuilt this is and some of the options and features. I'm really excited to get this thing out on some great adventures and build it up and share it with you. What do you say we take a close up look at it? Now, I imagine a lot of people are gonna have questions about why did I buy a Toyota Land Cruiser? And I will explain all of that at the end of the video. But just to let you know, yes, my Jeep Gladiator build is still in full effect. In fact, since the last time you've seen it, I have made some very, very big and major changes that we will be talking about soon. But let's dive into my new Land Cruiser, which I am really, really enjoying. So. This is the mid-grade Land Cruiser. So there is the 1958, which is the base model. And then they have the first edition. This one is right in between. So it's, it's optioned out pretty nicely and it's got some great off-road features, which I will get into. The color is called Underground, which I really like, especially with all the black accents. It's 193 inches long. It's 77 inches wide, which makes it just a little bit larger than a Jeep Wrangler four-door. So it's still pretty mildly narrow which I really think is going to be perfect out on the trails let's take a look at the front we'll work our way to the back let me just show you this guy I absolutely love the design of the Land Cruiser it's got that boxy look that's a good throwback to the original heritage of the Land Cruiser I remember when my son and I were at SEMA and I saw this for the very first time I said you know I could see myself driving that one day and fast forward about eight months and now I've got a Land Cruiser and I am very excited. Let's talk about some of the key points here. I love that Toyota is spelled out like it would have been originally. It's not the little logo there. Uh, up front here is the radar. And if you noticed, the radar system is up high. And down low, you've got a modular bumper piece that could easily be pulled out and figure out a winch. I looked back behind there. I think the aftermarket is gonna easily come up with a way to add a winch bumper to this thing. You do have a camera down here that we have to relocate because it does have a full 360 degree camera system, which is really gonna be nice out on the trail. So I wanna make sure that that stays into play. And then over here, you've got some fog lights, which are white or you can turn them amber, which is a really neat feature. But I like that the fact that the front of this is in kind of pieces because if you were to like hit a rock or hit a tree or anything, kind of a fender bender, you don't have to replace the whole front end. Each one of these pieces is its own component, which would make it nice and a little bit budget friendly to have to fix. But we'll be figuring out some kind of winch bumper in the front. Now, down below, we do have some nice tow hooks. And then underneath, there is a steel belly pan skid plate that gives a lot of nice protection. Overall, I love the design and the styling of the front end. Let's pop the hood, take a look underneath. Now, the Toyota Land Cruiser is very similar in design to the Lexus GX 
550, except the Lexus GX 550 has some nicer components, including some hood struts that make raising the hood open up a lot nicer. And this has a different power plant in here. So this is a 2.4 liter turbocharged overhead cam hybrid engine that puts out 326 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque. This thing scoots right along down the road and fuel economy so far, I'm pretty early, uh, has only been around 20 miles per gallon, but it's rated at 23 miles per gallon in combined use. I think once the engine gets broken in a little bit, I should start seeing some better fuel economy, although I'm gonna add bigger tires and more weight. And so we'll find a balance on fuel economy somewhere, but I like the openness of how they've designed the engine bay. It's really easy to see and access everything. And because this is a hybrid engine, there's a lot of differences here. There's no alternator. There's a single fan belt down there. I shouldn't call it a fan belt. The only thing it does is attaches to the water pump. That's it. And there's a nice steel pulley down there. So it's good, durable stuff. It's easy to visually see all the hoses and connections because, you know, when you're out on the trail and if something goes wrong and you need to troubleshoot it, it's nice to be able to look at it. And I know the Toyota guys are going to be like, there's Toyotas are totally reliable. Well, Ask that to the folks that have the twin turbocharged V6. Um, I'm glad to have this engine and I think hopefully it should be nice. Now I know that there's a lot of questions about running a turbocharged, you know, hybrid system. And I, I gotta be honest, I have some of those reservations, but Toyota has been doing hybrids for over 20 years and turbocharged engines aren't anything new. And so the combination of this will be interesting to see how it all evolves, but I'm really excited to get out and really put this through its paces and put a lot of miles on this thing. Now, the, there is no brake booster. It's an electronic brake booster over there. And in the back, I will show you where the 6.5 amp hour battery is. Kind of takes up quite a bit of space. Now the engine is mated up to an eight speed automatic transmission and this thing is full time all wheel drive. So that transfer case that be, is behind it is a two speed transfer case. It's one to one in all wheel drive. And then when you put it in a low range, it's a 2.56 to one, which I haven't really had an opportunity to really test that out. I'm pretty much out here on an easy dirt road, but we'll get to some trails here soon where we'll put it into some low range, use those lockers. Oh yeah, it's got some things. Let's, uh, let's take a look at tires, wheels, and suspension. Now, wheels and tires. These are not very Land Cruiser-like. These are some 265-60 Dunlop street tires, and they're around a 20-inch wheel, which, 18 inch wheel is standard, but you still just get these street tires. And I think they probably did this for fuel economy, but I've already ordered new proper off-road tires and some wheels. And so this is one of the first things to go, but it does come standard with an 18 inch wheel, but you still get a street tire. And I think this is, I don't have to do the calculation. It's right around a 32 and a half. Um, so they're a pretty good sized tire, but I think we've got plenty of room here to put some bigger stuff in. And I think we can also lift this up here. I mean, look, there's gonna be a lot of aftermarket support for this, I believe. Behind the wheel, you've got a dual piston caliper and in the rear, it's a single piston caliper. And then if you look up here, yeah, that's a cardboard liner. I don't really love that either. It's all right, there's some things I do like, but there's a few criticisms I have. It does have an independent front suspension. But I will say this, taking a look at it, spending some time on the garage, it is boxed in. It's got a forged knuckle end on there. It's really, really beefy. In the rear, we have a solid heavy duty axle, which does have a rear locker, which is gonna be extremely nice. If we can find a way to put a front locker on this, that will be a huge bonus. But the one thing we do have in the front is we do have an electronic sway bar disconnect, which is gonna give this thing more articulation out on the trails. And so far, the ride quality on this thing on the road, and even here on the trail on these wheels and tires, was actually really nice. It's got some nice compliance with it. I'll be making some modifications to this suspension, but I don't wanna mess up the ride quality because it's really nice. Um, underneath, we are body on frame. And 
the frame under there is extremely stout and they've done a lot of stuff to make it so it's rust resistant. They filled up a lot of the holes, they've inserted it with wax. And so I think that frame is gonna hold up for a pretty long time. And then one of the things that I really found interesting is the front and rear drive shaft. They are steel, but the ends of them are greasable U-joints, which you don't see very often on new vehicles today. That's really nice. And that's something I really appreciate about Land Cruiser. If you just look underneath here, you can tell with the skid plates, all the beefiness, this thing is built up to handle a little bit of abuse out on the trail. So pretty happy with that. Now, I do have some plastic mud flaps here, which are doing their job today. In the front, you've got this little wind guard, which I think I'm probably just going to remove that. And then you've got a little bit of a plastic liner over the top here. But all in all, I like the styling of this. We just need to get rid, we just need to get rid of this street rubber. All right, stepping over to the side of the Land Cruiser, we have a 112 inch wheelbase. It's got a 31 degree approach angle, 25 degree breakover angle, and a 22 degree departure angle. It's got 8.7 inches of ground clearance. And let's be honest, those numbers are good, but they're not class leading, but we're gonna fix all of that with some upgrades, which I think will be great. Down below here, I've got some plastic side steps. Uh, those are gonna come off and we will put something a little more robust to give us some protection. Uh, here we have a fold-in mirror. It's actually an electronic fold-in mirror, but you can still manually fold it in. But that's nice when you're on the trail. You can just hit a button and fold those in. I do have a roof rack on top, but I don't plan on putting a lot of stuff on the roof. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get to the rear. But I love I love the styling of this. I love how the lines just kind of curve up a little bit. You've got these sharp lines on the side. They've done a really good job with this. Really, really like how this looks. Let's uh, hop over to the rear. All right, at the back of the Land Cruiser, you've got the blacked out Land Cruiser badge and it says Toyota back here in black. There was a chrome little iForce hybrid badge here. I've already removed that because it was just totally out of place. But I love the way the back of this looks. You do have this kind of big spoiler back here. But let's talk about the tow capacity on this. Now this had a big plastic cover on here and I've already taken that out so it exposes the trailer hitch. But this has a 6,000 pound tow rating, which is really nice because I'm definitely going to be towing our Patriot Campers trailer with this. But some of the other specs on the Land Cruiser, it weighs just over 5,300 pounds, how it's outfitted, but it has an 1,100 pound payload capacity. I don't think I'm gonna reach that, but we'll probably get close with some of the stuff we're gonna build out in here. But overall, I like the exterior design of this. And the one feature that I really like is we can open this rear window into and it's got this little button over on the side, which the reason they did that is because if you integrate the button here and you ever had to replace the button or this glass, that gets kind of expensive. So having the button here on the side is pretty nice, but this makes it easy to be able to reach in here, just grab something really quick and then close that up. And, and then it has, this has an electronic tailgate. If you get the base model, it's just struts. I think just the struts will be fine. I don't need this, although right now it's a little hot out, so the shade is perfect. So it's a nice little awning. And then in the rear, guys, we have so much room. And obviously I'm a Jeep Wrangler owner and I'm kind of comparing this to a Jeep Wrangler, which isn't fair. I will talk about the vehicles that I was considering in addition to this. We have a lot of room back here, a lot of storage space. The only thing is because this is a hybrid, they put the battery back here. And so you have a little bit of a raised platform to make room for that battery. There is some storage right in here and there's some storage on the front of it, but the battery takes up the bulk of that. Now, I think I'm gonna delete the seats because I took a measurement. I can sleep inside the Land Cruiser, guys. I'm six foot two and I can easily fit between the front seat and all the way here. So if we pull those seats and make a nice little storage spot, but also a platform to sleep on, if I take this out by myself, I can sleep in here. If Regina comes with me, we'll just take the trailer. That's no problem. So I don't think that we're gonna put any kind of rooftop tent or anything on here because I don't think we need it. One other nice feature back here is this little outlet. 
It's got a 2400 watt inverter. Guys, you can make coffee, you can run power tools, 2400 watt inverter, that's really nice. The only thing it doesn't have back here, it doesn't have a standard like 12 volt cigarette plug, so I'll have to add that. The battery is here on the side, and so that should be easy to do. And then above the battery, there's the access for the bottle jack. It comes with a bottle jack, which I really appreciate. Now, the GX 550, the Lexus, and overseas, uh, you can get this with a third row. In the U.S., it is not a, there's no third row option. I think that's because of the hybrid battery. But you're going to notice that there are some things back here that you would have with a third row, including cup holders and vents and some USB-C ports. I'll figure out a way to take advantage of, uh, of those, probably the USB-C ports as well. But um, there is a lot of storage, and I'm very happy with that. We just got to figure out kind of the payload back here. I almost forgot, before we head in the interior, I want to talk about the spare tire. So there is a full-size spare tire on the Lance Cruiser that is underneath. And I took a good look under there, and I will be honest, I don't know how big of a tire we're going to be able to get under there. I think we can fit a 33, a 33 and a half, probably no problems. But ideally, with this vehicle, I'm going to want to put 35s on here down the road. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if we're going to be able to fit a 35 in there. We'll take a look, see if we can do some trimming. I'm not sure. We may end up having to put a rear tire carrier on here, which I don't love the idea of that, but that may be the only way to run 35s. All right, let's take a look at the interior. Now, for the interior of the Land Cruiser, and I have the vehicle running now just so we can have the AC on and the cooled seats uh, because it's hot outside. So it's in hybrid mode, so it's not running right now, but the engine may start or stop uh, to keep things going as we're doing this. But yeah, it's warm out there. Okay, now, a lot of the things that I like about this interior, first of all, I just love the design of it. It's got kind of that utilitarian look, but there's still some nice refinements that give it a little bit of classiness to it. And there's some soft plastics all around here, which are nice. This, these seats are not leather. These are the mid trim seats and they're like a kind of a, an artificial leather. Uh, they're extremely extremely comfortable uh, and that's what I was looking for in this vehicle. I wanted something that was going to be comfortable and quiet on long trips. Look, I, I love my Jeep. I love the durability of the Jeep and the capability, but let's be honest, um, they're a little more raw and not quite as refined and that's what I was looking for in this vehicle and it's met all of those things. It's got a, a telescoping electric steering wheel, which is nice. All the buttons on the steering wheel are easy to read and easy to use. I'm not, I don't feel like I have to like learn this. It's pretty intuitive. You got a nice soft armrest. The, the seats are heated and cooled. And I will say these are the nicest cooled seats that I've ever had. I've had a couple of vehicles with cool seats and uh, these ones work really well. Plus these are electric seats over here on the driver's side and it's got an electric lumbar feature which makes this really comfortable, but it's just, Man, I could just see myself on a long trip just trying to just enjoy it guys. This is going to be so nice. We have all nice buttons, physical buttons for the HVAC. So your air conditioning, your fans, everything here is nice. And then we have a really nice 12.3 inch screen on here and they did a good job with this. Uh, it has Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay. And for me, I've always run like an iPad and my iPhone holder, which have always taken up space. And here I was trying to figure out where I would even put that stuff. And now that I've been using it, I've realized I don't, I don't need an iPad anymore. I mean, I have Onyx Off-Road opened up on here, which I use Onyx Off-Road all the time. And if you're interested in using Onyx Off-Road, I will leave a link down below. It's a great application for exploring out here on the trails in the backcountry. But wirelessly on Apple CarPlay, it's a big enough screen that I can easily just do everything I need to right here. And there's also all kinds of other features. Having my music on here, the stereo system on this is, I think it's the standard stereo system. It's really, really nice. Uh, one thing that I noticed on the infotainment center is uh, when I was in Apple CarPlay, I was trying to figure out like, how do I get back to the main Toyota menu? And what you have to do is you actually have to go to the Toyota app and then that takes you back to the Toyota menu. It's very fast and uh, it responds well and there's a lot of nice features on here and a lot of settings that you can play with. Uh, I'm still kind of figuring that out. Again, I've only had this vehicle for a couple days, but so far 
I'm really happy with it, but I think most of the time this will just be in Apple CarPlay mode. And down here is a nice little spot for your phone. I don't have the option for a wireless car charger, but there are two USB-C chargers and one USB-C media charger down here. There are no standard USBs uh, in here. It's all USB-Cs, which is nice because you get, they're smaller, they're better power, and that's just the way that things are going. Uh, the screen in the front uh, gives you some nice options. There's two digital gauges there, and there's a lot of flexibility to change things out. So you can see your miles per gallon. You can see how you're doing off-road. You can monitor your tire pressure. It's a nice, easy system to look at. I don't have the heads-up display. I think there, that is an option. Um, over here on the other side, there's a bunch of buttons for your fog lights and stuff. Uh, the gas cap, you actually have to push it, uh, the button to open that. So I guess that's a nice feature because nobody's gonna tamper with, uh, with your gas, uh, but it is convenient when you're at the gas station to not have to push the button. Remember to push the button when you get out. Uh, it, this does come with a uh, brake controller, tow brake controller. It's already built in, uh, so that's gonna be nice. That's not something I'm gonna have to add to this when we start towing. Very convenient there. And then getting down here, you have a really nice designed physical shifter uh, for the transmission. And this is cable driven underneath. I took a look, there's actually a physical cable there. This is not a bunch of electronics for your transmission shifter. And it does have a manual mode and it's just pretty nice in manual mode. Over here, you have your drive mode. So you in the standard drive mode, you hit that button and then you turn this little dial and you've got eco, normal and sport. I've been leaving it in sport and it's plenty. This thing has lots of power. You get on it and it goes. I mean, the, the hybrid system kind of kicks in early and then that turbo kicks in right after. So you don't have like this turbo leg. So you really get some instant torque here. I mean, 465 pound feet of torque is nothing to laugh at. This thing, this thing gets up and goes. It's not fast, but it's, it's quick. That's, that's fair enough to say. Uh, down here is what they call MTS, which is your off-road modes. You have auto, dirt, sand, mud, and deep snow. And then down below is your crawl control mode, which is like your cruise control off-road. I typically don't use that very often, but I'll experiment with it a little bit. Now, moving over to the transfer case, there's just this little tiny knob uh, to put it into four low. So you shift this and you shift your transmission into neutral, push this down into four low, and then and it just takes a minute. It's pretty quick. Uh, I've done it a couple times just to see how it works. And it does go into four low pretty fast. But then you can use your rear locker, which is gonna be really nice off-road. We've got the central locking differential if we need to use that. And then the front stabilizing bar disconnect, which is gonna give us a whole lot of extra articulation. And then you can turn off your uh, traction control there. All in all, everything is laid out and easy to access. You know, one of my complaints with the Jeep was that some of those buttons and knobs were down here. Here, it's right here. I can easily just see what's going on. All the information is right there pretty happy with this. Uh, the armrest, I'll say, is nice and comfortable, and I did not get the optional fridge, which I don't think I would have used, honestly. I prefer to have all this extra storage down here. And then up top, you've got uh, just some standard stuff, but it is a nice little touch light uh, in, the, in the mirror. I didn't get the video mirror, but we do have all the buttons underneath here for your garage door opener. So all in all, lots of room in here, lots of comfort, lots of space. This is gonna be a great place to spend a lot of time on. I did not get the sunroof, which I'm happy with because I don't really need a sunroof. Plus you lose a little bit of headroom and uh, all in all, it's just, it's just a comfortable vehicle. I, I'm really excited to put this through its paces on and off road. All right, let's hop in the rear. All right, two things to uh, mention also before uh, I show you these seats and how this is in the rear. Uh, all the windows do have automatic up, which thank you, Toyota. My wife thanks you. It's something that I think every vehicle now in 2024 should just come standard with. Plus, I have rubber floor mats all around, which is necessary because, you know, I'm going to get these things kind of dirty. Okay, the rear seats. One thing I don't love about the rear seats is how they fold down. So, this drops down. Oh, this is uh, the Toyota uh, first aid kit that comes with it. I will be replacing this with the Trail Recon Vehicle Trauma Kit. Uh, but this is how flat they fold down in this configuration. And what I don't love is that this isn't line up with that whole back system. I mean, that back system is raised, so it would have been really nice if they could have figured out how to make this all flat. But I think because this was for a third row, 
so that you could climb back there. That's kind of why this seat design is like this, but I'm probably gonna get rid of these seats. However, there are some really nice features about these seats. One is that they do recline, find the, find the lever brad, and so you could, oh yeah, you could definitely take a nap back here. And look, I'm 6'2", I haven't touched the front seat. I have so much leg room, a lot of space back here, which is really surprising. I mean, you could easily have two adults and maybe one child back here. You have this little hump in the center, which I don't know, that would be kind of uncomfortable. I don't, you could put somebody in the middle, but it would be tight. But four adults in this vehicle, no problem on a long trip. You get your vent right up here, which is nice. You have your full climate control down here. You've got some USB-Cs down here and you do have a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter style down there. Up here, you've got a couple cup holders. There's cup holders all around, but a nice soft um, armrest right there. Yeah, the rear is really comfortable. Just don't like how the seats fold down. Well, I tell you what, I think I'm gonna get used to having this lift gate up here. This is pretty nice to have just an instant awning. I may put an awning on here, but we'll see. So now let's talk about why I bought a Land Cruiser. Well, first I really was looking for a nice, easy, comfortable daily driver. And so I wanted something that was a little more nice, a little more luxurious to drive around during the day when I'm running around, but could still do some good off-roading and tow the trailer. So when Regina and I want to go on a long, easy trip, uh, we have something just a little nicer, a little more refined to take. And the Land Cruiser checked all the boxes. Now, there were two other vehicles that I gave some consideration to. One is the Ineos Grenadier, which I had the opportunity to spend a day with a while back, and I've seen that vehicle many times and gotten to know it pretty well. I didn't think it was for me. Um, I think it's an amazing vehicle and it's very purpose built. My only concern with that vehicle is it's such a new vehicle manufacturer um, and that parts and supply and just overall like, how's that company gonna do? Um, there's, some, there's some questions there that I have. I'm excited to see what people do with the Ineos Grenadier. I think it's an amazing vehicle, but I think as a daily driver, it just wasn't gonna check the box for me. You know, uh, the Toyota Land Cruiser, while this is a first year model, and yes, there may be some things that come up, it's Toyota. And so I know that Toyota is going to back up this vehicle. And plus, you know, I can get support with this vehicle across the entire world, which, I'll, I'll just let you uh, marinate on that a little bit. This, uh, this gives us an open door for some other adventures. The other vehicle that, uh, that I was considering was the Land Rover Defender, which I think is a great vehicle. And honestly, from an aesthetic standpoint, that was Regina's favorite vehicle. The only problem with that vehicle, and I shouldn't say a problem, but it's just a little more luxurious. Uh, price point is about the same as the Land Cruiser if you get the base model, but you don't get all the nice features that we got with the Land Cruiser. So if you start to option that out, those things get expensive pretty quickly. And off-road capability, while it is off-road capable, there's a lot of you know airbags and actuators and a lot of electronics, plus it's independent suspension in the rear. And I just thought that Nah, that's a little bit more of a driver and a li little bit less of a adventure vehicle, the style of adventure that I like to do. And I think this just hits the point for me. Is this gonna be as capable as my Jeep Letter? Absolutely not. I don't need it to be. I just need it to be capable to go take us out on some moderate trails and just have a good time with it. And so now I'm excited to really start modifying this thing. Oh, we'll use it a little bit. I mean, the next time you see this thing, we'll take it out on the trail and just see how it does and do, do some good driving around with it. But I've already got some plans for modifications. The only challenge is this is a first year vehicle. So aftermarket's gonna take a minute to catch up. There's already some folks that are doing some stuff with it. And so I'm gonna keep my eye on that and kind of see what works for me. But building out the interior is gonna be important. Putting some really nice sized tires on there will be important. Uh, I gotta figure out comms on this thing. I was kind of looking around. Uh, I think it'll be easy to mount a radio in the glove box, but I still haven't figured out like 
where I can mount the handheld uh, inside there because you get a lot of that soft plastic. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. There's gonna be some of those little things that we'll sort out, you know, adding a winch and bumper and lights, all of it. It's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be new. You know, I've done so many Jeeps that that's just kind of easy for me now. I kind of know when I get, you know, I got the Gladiator. I kind of knew what I was gonna do right away. This is a little bit of the unknown, which makes me excited. I don't know exactly how this build is gonna evolve. I know what I want it to do, but we'll see along the way. I'm excited guys. I would love to know your thoughts about the Land Cruiser in the comments. I know that some of the Jeep purists are gonna be upset that I got a Toyota, but you know what? I'm a car guy, I'm not a Jeep guy. I just love vehicles in general. And, uh, and this one, uh, only a couple days in, I mean, yeah, it's still the honeymoon, but I really love the potential of this vehicle. All right, guys. That's it. You, next time you'll see this, uh, we'll be out on the trail. Make sure you check us out over at trailrecon.com and hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss the next Land Cruiser adventure. Thanks for watching.